in our um, event. Thank you. Very well. Now, Not just from this event, but also is a sponsor of this event. So let's welcome Adam Frost. Y ahora la conexión se traslada hacia Salt Lake City, Estados Unidos. Salt Lake City, USA. La cobertura está bordeada de las aguas de lagos al lado y los picos nevados de las cordilleras Salt Lake and the snowy peaks of the Wasatch Mountain Range. Desde allí nos acompaña Aaron Frost, experto y consultor de Angular, organizador Frost, de NGConf y fundador de Angular, Devs. Organizador de NGConf, cómo acelerar la velocidad de tus aplicaciones con Angular y Scully. Angular and Scully. Uh, now we are. Hi, Frosty. How you doing? Good, good. And you? I'm great, man. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. We're excited to have you here too. Good, good. Thank you very much for everything. It was a great workshop yesterday. Yeah, I had fun. It was a good time. We taught a lot of people about Scully, so I'm glad we got to be here. Yeah, really cool. Thank you very much for that. So please enjoy the stage. Thank you. Um, can you, everyone can see my screen okay, or you guys will just, we're good? Uh, yeah, we're seeing your complete screen. Perfect. We're seeing right. Skype. Right? Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Um, so uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about um, Scully and kind of explain the Jamstack to the Angular community. It's a technology that I really kind of discovered maybe mm, less than a year ago when we started developing Scully. And um, I kind of wanted to, we learned a lot of really good benefits that I had no idea were there. So I wanted to give a talk about it and share to everybody, hey, this is the thing that this is the most important thing you can do to speed up your 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 Angular apps is to embrace the Jamstack. So I want to explain a little bit about what the Jamstack is and then also explain how do you do the Jamstack in Sco in Angular. So I am going to do some demo and it could go horribly wrong. If anyone's ever done a presentation live coding then you know what I mean when I say it could go wrong and it probably will. So um, anyway, let's let's kind of get through this. So let me explain what the Jamstack is. The Jamstack is uh, it's a way to construct your production assets so that you don't need as much um, JavaScript for the users to experience your app. Now, your Angular is still going to be in completely there, but um, the we're gonna make scully makes it very very easy so that your user can see your website without having to download all the angular first and then once they see it and they start interacting with it then it can download the rest of the angular app and, and your app can run as normal but the jamstack is trying to reduce the complexity of your production environment so let me kind of walk through what that means you're going to pre-render each of your views in your app so every single route with every single different parameter is going to be pre-rendered and um you're going to render that into an index.html file. So if you have 100 pages, you're going to have 100 index.html files, one for each. Um, you're going to cache as many API calls as you can, okay? And that's really, really important in, for multiple reasons. One, for security. Two, for cost. Three, for speed for your users and for the speed on the servers. There's a lot of really, really important um, reasons why you should cache as many API calls as possible. And then the third one is use your CDN, rely on your CDN as much as you possibly can. Put as much of your app on a CDN as you possibly can so that your user isn't constantly coming to visit your server. Um, as, a, as a production team, you want the user to visit the CDN as much as possible and not come to the server. And those are kind of the pillars of the Jamstack. Pre-render your site, cache as many API calls as you can, and then put everything out on the CDN. Um, so it is a bit simpler than I imagined it would be, but once you really understand how to do that with Angular, you realize, man, I've been giving my users a bad experience, and, and there's really not a good reason because Scully is going to make this really, really simple to do Jamstack on any Angular app. 
So um, there's no amount of optimization in your front end app that can provide as much or increase much as much pre- the performance for your end users as the Jamstack will. This is a quote that we we started sharing with some of our clients, and they really they really really agreed. They're like, yeah, that is one of the more important things that that you can do as an Angular developer. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I just want I just want to reiterate that there's nothing you can do that will speed up your app as much as embracing the Jamstack. You could be the best architect in South America, all the Americas, the world. The Jamstack will help you optimize your JavaScript app better than than you ever could have on your own. And it's not just Scully; it's just embracing the ideas of the Jamstack that will do it. Okay, so what is Scully then? So if if the Jamstack is this new way of deploying your app, well, how does Scully fit into that? So Scully is a Jamstack tool chain. That means Scully helps you turn your Angular app into a Jamstack app. And that could be kind of complicated, but Scully's tried to encapsulate some of the difficult pieces into a very easy to use API. And I, I'm gonna walk you through it today, but I do want to show off, hey, it is a lot easier than you're imagining. So some of the goals of Scully are um, we have all the same goals as the Jamstack, but we want to do it for 100% of Angular projects, not just some, not just the best ones. We want it to be for good code projects and bad code projects and in the middle code projects. We want everyone to be able to use the Jamstack. That's one of our goals. And we want to be able to have you start integrating with little to no effort. Okay, You can get really advanced in in your Scully integration, but you don't need to. Most of the benefits you can get for relatively, um, for, not free, but cheap. They're relatively easy to integrate to your project. So that was one other thing. We also want to support Markdown because we know a lot of developers want to do their blogs in Angular. And we wanted to give the Angular community a very simple way to build a website with Markdown so that they can do their blogs. And uh, it can be as simple as pushing up a new Markdown file to GitHub and your, your Jamstack blog just appears. And then we wanted to have a really, really powerful plugin uh, e- ecosystem. So um, this is something the Angular Universal has never provided is a really easy way to plug into it and make it accessible for the community. So while Universal has allowed us to pre-render our stuff and have a Jamstack um, like experience, it's never had a plugin system to make it easy to integrate with and easy to extend. And that was one of our goals is we need to have a very, very powerful and easy to integrate with plugin system so I can create plugins, but also use other people's plugins. So that's one of the other goals of Scully. So this 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 is an example of one of our clients' website. On the right, uh, on the left, you're gonna see the website without Scully. So here, it's about to start over again. Give it a second. It's about to start. When they both go blank, that's when it's starting the load. So here it's, it's loading. The one on the right is with Scully. You can see it appeared relatively quickly. And the one on the left is with Angular and AngularJS and all their third-party plugins and everything that has to load. And this is, like, this is simulating 3G internet. So again, you can see Scully, the website appears extremely fast. Without Scully, it's just a regular Angular app. It appears very, very slowly. It's making lots of API calls. And this client, they were experiencing a lot lot of people abandoning their website before the page ever loaded. And once we got them on Scully, those abandoned rates really went down. So there's a lot of advantages to having your users experience this kind of performance. And, And let me just say, this company, they did the most basic Scully implementation. They didn't even do like the advanced stuff to get this. They did like the simplest of simple. They they did less than what I'm going to show you today. Let me just say that. Okay. They did not do advanced scroll integrations and they got this kind of performance increases. So, so yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to do a demo. I have a project where uh, we're going to, it's a donut store. It's going to show you some donuts and you can see donuts. If you're, I promise a lot of you are going to be hungry (laughs) by the time uh, by the time the presentation's over, okay? That's, I can't promise you'll learn anything, but you will be hungry, I promise. So I'm gonna, we're gonna add Scully to a project. We're gonna kind of walk through the Scully config. We'll pre-render the whole site with Scully. And then we're gonna go through a couple of the, um, you know, how do I test the pre-rendered site? How do I use some of the plugins? How do I cache some of my API calls? And I have a timer here, so I know I've got 22 minutes to walk through this demo, so I should be good, okay? So, 
over here, I have just a regular Angular app, all right? And um, if I, I'm just going to do ng serve real quick, just so everyone can see this. Come on, serve it up, serve it up. <whistles> do it, do it. Faster than that. Sorry, everybody. I don't know why it's going so slow. Okay, we're almost done. It's not a very difficult app. Do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I should get a song to sing during this part of the presentation. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's just refresh. So, okay, here's our donuts, all right? So we've got all these donuts. I can scroll down and I can click on them. It takes me to the donut detail page. I can go back to like the main page and um, I, could, I could click on this Twitter button. It takes me to Twitter. But it's a very simple site that simply shows a list of donuts, and you can go to their, their donut detail pages, okay? So there's about 40-something donuts in here, okay? So we're going to pre-render this home page, and then we're going to pre-render each of these detail pages, all right? And that's what we're going to spend our time doing today. And not only are we going to pre-render it, but we're also going to cache the API calls so that um, it doesn't have to make those API calls. Like, if you look here, it had to call the endpoint um the donuts endpoint to get back um to get back the list of the json we're going to make it so it doesn't have to talk to the server to get that it's going to be able to cache those calls inside the page itself this is going to allow for maximum performance for our users when they come to our website the first time okay so i'm going I'm to walk everyone through this the first step however is to simply install scully so let me show you how easy it is there, there there's several steps so we, we created an Angular schematic so that you don't have to know all the steps. So to install Scully, you're just going to say ng add at Scully.io init. And this schematic here, let me run it. It's going to do a couple changes to your file system. It's going to create a new Scully config. It's going and it's going to npm install a couple packages. But um, there's really only about, let's say, less than 10 steps it's going to go through. But we didn't want anyone to have to do this manually. So we're like, hey, let's go ahead and create a... Um, Let's go ahead and create a schematic to do this for us. So right now it's, it's NPM installing the packages. Stop talking to me. Get it done. Waiting. I should play a song on my harmonica while we're waiting. Come on, buddy. Come on. There we go. Okay. So we're done. So we got, uh, we got Scully installed. So Scully's here. That's it. It did. It did. It did several things. If we look at the change log, um, you can see it modified my app module by bringing in this thing called the Scully lib module, um, and it just kind of imported it into my app module. It added a couple of things to my package JSON, mainly some some scripts, as well as the Scully uh, node modules. Uh, it added a polyfill that it needs with just own JS. And then really the last thing it did was it created the Scully config, okay? And this Scully config is really where the life of your of your Scully project is going to live, okay? And um, I haven't changed this at all. This is just the default config, yeah? And I can already pre-render my site. Um, we're going to get a couple errors, and I'll explain them to you. But I kind of want us to walk through the Scully part of our site. So before you can do Scully, we're gonna you have to do a build. So I'm gonna say ng build, and I'm gonna add a watch flag onto it because I don't want to have to keep building every time we make changes to our Angular code. So I'm gonna say ng build watch. Once that's going, I'm gonna say npm run Scully watch. So now Scully is running in a watch mode, and so now anytime my Angular builds, Scully will rerun. Everything's kind of running, which is really excited. Um, Scully, the first time you run it, it's going to say, hey, do you mind if we collect errors um, and send them to the server? We're just trying to get things better. So if you could say yes, it would really help us out. So just say yeah to the errors. It's going to load up. It's going to find all your routes. And then it's going to kind of go off to the races. All right. So it's already done. It pre-rendered my site. Um, it pre-rendered the about page. And then it pre-rendered the home page. It did give me an error, though. It said, hey, I can't find the donut details routes. And I'm going to come back to this in a second. So it gives us this orange error. But you can already, over here in your um, dist folder, you can already see this static version of my website. So like, if I go to that About page and I click on this, you can already see um, 
it's got the, the information for my about page on there. All right. And if I go to the index.html and I format this, normally in an Angular app, the index.html is just empty, but our index.html has got a lot of donuts in here, right? And you can see our, where's our donut component? Yeah. So you have the app donuts component and that thing just prints out all the different donuts by title and we can kind of see what's going on here. So this is a pre-rendered version of my homepage. All right. Now, once I have it pre-rendered, I kind of want to, I kind of want to click on it and test it. So Scully gives you a, a server so you can test it out too. So I'm going to say over here, npm run Scully serve. All right. So this is going to serve my Scully assets. Why are you mad? How does that possibly in use? Um, how are you possibly? Uh, one second. Let me try this. NPM run Scully kill server. No. Okay. I've got a bug in my code. Give me one second. Oh, never mind. It's serving here. Cool. Sorry. I don't. I don't think I need a server. I think the server gets launched when I when I do a Scully watch. So give me one second. Let it finish building. All right. So we're good. So we're, now it's serving on this localhost 1680. So if I click on that. Over here's my Angular version of the website that I killed because I I did I killed Manji serve, um, and over here this is my Angular version of the website, okay, uh, or my Scully version. So this is the Scully version. If you look at the initial request for the page, and we we click on that localhost, it actually came down fully rendered, and you can see that here. Like it didn't come down as an empty index HTML. It came down as a fully rendered uh, index HTML, which is really really cool, and that's where you get the most of your performance is there. Now. Um, if you remember, it gave me an error for the donut slash donut ID routes, right? If we come back to this code, you, it, we can see it's complaining. Hey, I don't know where to find the, I don't know where to find those of donut IDs. So I'm, I'm going to skip that part. It says skipping. Okay. So it's skipping that route. If I click on, sorry, come back to my real project. If I click on one of these routes, because it's an angular, it's going to load. But if I refresh on this page, this page didn't get pre-rendered. So if I refresh, why are you working? Uh, maybe I'm, I'm looking at the Angular version. Well, why are you working? I have no idea why this is working. This should not work. Let's just say that. Um, I have no idea why it's working. I'm just going to keep going, though. I'm going to keep going because it makes no sense to me why it's working. Maybe I pre-rendered the site before we started. Actually, I did pre-render the site before we started. So let me go ahead and delete this because it should that shouldn't be there. All right. So now if I refresh, now this is the error it's going to give me. Okay, It's going to say, hey, you didn't pre-render donuts slash donut ID. All right. So I need to, and this is kind of where we start getting into the plugin system in Scully. I have to teach Scully how to get the, that list of those donut IDs so that it can render all those individual pages. Because when you look at it, it only rendered two pages, but I need it to render like 50 pages. So I'm going to show everybody how simple it is to work with Scully to teach it to render your, your other pages, okay? So the route that Scully said it was freaking out on is this one right here. It couldn't find that route, okay? So I'm going to put that up here in my Scully config. And I'm going to say, hey, let's use the JSON plugin because I need you to go get some JSON so we can get those IDs of the donuts from an API. So I'm going to say use the JSON plugin, and we're going to use it to solve this donut ID parameter. Okay, so we'll come down here and put donut ID, and I want it to get the data from a certain URL. So I'm going to say HTTP, and this can be any this could be any um, address on the internet. So I'm just going to say localhost 3000 donuts. Okay, and if you guys want to, if if everyone wants to see what what that's serving, it's just going to give me back an array of donuts. Okay, so localhost 3000, it just gives you back an array of donuts. This is my endpoint for all the donuts. Okay, and I want to get the ID property off of each donut because that's what that's what's in the route is the ID property. So I'm going to come back to my Scully and say, hey, once you get that, I want you to pull the property ID off each one, and I want you to use the ID as the donut ID in each route, okay? So that's all I had to do. This is, it's as simple as that. And then I can rerun my Scully build. So we'll come over here and we'll say rerun. <laughs> and it did not update at all. So I'm gonna kill the Scully watch. 
and I'm going to run it again. Come on, Scully. You can do it, buddy. So now it's it found a lot more pages and it's pre-rendering a lot more of them. And you can at the end you can see it said, hey, this time I rendered 49 pages. And if I come up into my my build folder, um, there's now a donuts directory. And now it pre-rendered all of these donuts. All right. And if I come in here and I I click on and I reformat the page. Sorry. Come on. There we go. Okay. And I come down to the bottom. You can see, hey, yeah, this is, in fact, the double dark chocolate donut, which is the one we're looking at. So this is the pre rendered version. Of so now, since it's serving it, I can come back over to my server. And now I've got the home page and all of these detail pages that are pre rendered. Now, let me show you something wonky. It's going to kind of blow your brains real quick. Because I pre rendered my site. I can actually disable JavaScript and my site will still run, okay? So watch this. I'm going to say disable JavaScript. And then I'm going to do a refresh. So this this is the page. I don't, I don't know if you even noticed. It, it appeared immediately. It didn't even take a second to, to appear. It appeared immediately. This page is rendered without JavaScript. Like if you notice, um, none of my JavaScript URLs were, were downloaded over here, okay? And I can still click and navigate and get the full list. And I can go there and I get the list and I can go back home, get the full list. Like this app is functioning without JavaScript at this point. Now I'm not telling you, you don't have to turn off JavaScript to use Scully. You can use it, but it's just one of the weird benefits that if you're not serving your JavaScript, most of your app is gonna continue to work. Like at least if it's an href, if you have any animations or stuff that might not work, but anyway, so. Um, one thing about this site, though, is um, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna re-enable my JavaScript though, enable JavaScript, um, and I'm gonna refresh this page. If you look at my AJAX request, I'm still calling that 3,000. I'm still calling th the 3,000, which is my server, to get the donuts. Okay, I want to cache that call during the build so that when I ship this to production, it doesn't call the API anymore. I want it to just cache the call inside the page so that this page loads no API calls, all right? So I'm gonna do that real quick. And again, your minds are about to be blown. It's stupid simple. It should not be as easy as we made it. We've almost made it too easy, okay? And I apologize for making it too easy. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, so let me let me, let me me pull up this, up this donut component. Donuts component, all right? Now in this donuts component, we're going to bring in, sorry, here. We're going to bring in a new service that you get with Scully. Okay, it's called um, Transfer State. Transfer State Service. Okay, and this just comes in from from the Scully libs. Okay, and and I'm going to say to Scully, I'm going to say, hey, um, I'm going to say, let's just comment this out real quick. I'm going to say const donuts is equal to this dot transfer state dot use Scully transfer state. I'm going to say when the when the value is cached, I want you to use the cache name of donuts. But if the value is not cached, I want you to get the value from here. And I'm just going to use our HTTP call. Okay. I'm just going to put it in there. So what's going to happen here is when Scully runs, like. As the, as it builds down here, Scully won't actually be cached. Like it won't actually have um, the data yet, and the, and the Scully service is taking care of hiding this from you. So Scully will say, "Hey, if I'm running inside Scully, meaning I'm going through the pre-render phase, call this and put that into the cache with this name." Okay, so it's going to get the donuts from here and put it into the cache with the name donuts. But then when I'm out in production, it's going to pull the donuts out of the cache by the name donuts. So, and, and it does this trick for me. So when I save this, this rebuilt over here, which should, let's have our Scully rebuild. It's gonna go through rebuild all of our sites. And so now once that's done, I should be able to come back here. And when I come home and I do a refresh, um, notice there's no Ajax calls anymore. So this the site loaded, right? If I look at, 
Um, sorry, let's come over here. If I look at the index HTML, the index HTML came down pre-rendered, but then when Angular downloaded and re-rendered the page, Angular did not go out and do an Ajax call. Angular cached that call. So that call now will no longer happen in my production app because it gets cached during the build. I want you to stand back and look at your app. How much of the data in your app could you cache? Like lots, right? Like most. Any user data? No. But product data and even category data and a lot of, of metadata about your app, you can just cache. Uh, the, the the different options in the in the menu, all of your translation strings, like there's so much you can cache that you don't need to go fetch anymore in in in, in production. You can fetch feature toggles, like there's so much you can cache most of your data. All right, so like that's one other super super cool feature about um, Scully, and we make it as ridiculously uh, simple as we possibly can. What other thing that I say is going to do? Uh, cache API calls, testing, pre render. Mm, okay. So I think I went too fast on my demo. I'm, I'm usually, I'm that bad speaker that, that Nicholas has to be like, hey, stop talking, uh, get off the stage. But today I went fast. So I'm gonna end a little bit early because I know they're behind anyway. So they're probably like, oh my God, thank you, Aaron. But I do wanna say this. I want everyone to go out and try this and you're gonna have questions. I mean, I have, I built, I helped build the bloody thing and I have questions, yeah? Um, but I, we try and make it so that you have answers anywhere you look. So I'm going to tell, I want to teach everyone, Hey, here's, here's how you start. Here's how you, um, here's how you ask questions. Um, and here's how you get help. We have a Gitter channel, go out to Gitter slash Scully.io slash community. Either one of the core team will be there or someone who's done Scully before will be there. Someone's going to be able to, to be there to like help you. Okay. So it's a little bit like having your own private Slack just for Scully, but you don't have to get invited. Like anyone can be there all day, hours of the day. You can get help with Scully. Very cool. Um, my, my Twitter's open on DMs, Jorge and Sander. They're also core team members. Jorge and Sander have their DMs open on Twitter. We're all there if you have any questions. Once a week on Tuesdays at 12 o'clock my time, we have office hours, okay? And office hours are a meeting where you can just come and join our chat and we'll be there and you can share your screen if you're having problems and we'll just be like, be -dee 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 -dee, and we'll, 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 uh, we'll fix your, your problems. Yeah, we'll teach you. We'll, we'll try our best to get, get through the issues you're having. And then maybe your company's big and you're like, can we even use Scully? And you just want to ask some questions. Feel free to send me an email and um, let's talk about it. Because maybe you don't want Scully. Maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Like it, it might be an unknown. And if you want help asking that question, email me, Aaron at hero.dev, and we'll we'll try and be there to answer any questions. But um, I will be in the Q&A panel in a few minutes. The slides are here. So if anyone wants to go grab my slides, feel free to do that. But other than that, thank you for the time. Thank you very much, Frosty. Yeah, it was really cool. It was it, everything worked from? I know really it's kind of weird when it all works. You know, you know, you you, you don't expect it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's not supposed to work sometimes, but it did. <laughs> so that's good. You guys are doing a, a really cool job with Scully. Thank you very Appreciate much for it, that. Man. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's begin the panel. Let's go to 